Let's make the best five ingredient no-bake cheesecake you'll ever have. I think cheesecake might be the ultimate spring summertime dessert. Oh, who am I kidding? It's always a good time for cheesecake. There's something about the combination of sweet and tangy along with the rich, smooth texture that melts in your mouth that somehow really hits the spot. What I love about no-bake cheesecake, unlike baked cheesecake, is that it only requires a handful of ingredients and literally takes a few minutes to whip up. I'm gonna show you two techniques. One is what I call the dump it all in method, which is the fastest way to make it. You just dump everything together. It does require a bit of skill because you have to work quickly. The other is a completely foolproof method that beginners can use and always get perfect results. Lastly, I'm gonna show you how to save a runny cheesecake filling because it happens to all of us sometimes. Thank you to Miss Play for sponsoring this video. Let's start by making the base. It's the same for both methods. There's a good trick when you're making any type of cheesecake, whether it's no bake or baked. You want to mount the base of the pan upside down. That way it'll be easy to slide the cheesecake off the base. If you assemble the pan in the usual way, the ridge of the base will make it hard for you to transfer the cheesecake onto the plate because your spatula and well, your cheesecake will get stuck on the ridge. Once the base is secure, line the bottom with parchment paper. Put the cookies you want to use, either graham crackers or digestive biscuits, in a zip top bag and bash them to a fine texture using a rolling pin, or even better, just use a food processor. It's faster and easier. If you like, you can add mix-ins to your crust, like nuts or chocolate chips. Head over to the recipe on my website for how to do that. You're going to mix the cookie crumbs with melted butter until well combined and until it resembles wet sand just like this. You're going to pour the cookie crumbs into the pan and press the mixture down firmly into the pan to form the cheesecake crust. I like to use the base of a small drinking glass to do this, but the back of a spoon works also just fine. Put that in the fridge and let's talk cream cheese. Now there are two things you need to know when making no-bake cheesecake. If there's anything that you're going to take from this video, it has to be this. The first is to use cold cream cheese. Many people will tell you to use room temperature cream cheese for no-bake cheesecake. While that may work for some, in many cases, it's a recipe for disaster. Room temperature cream cheese will warm up the heavy cream, which is another key ingredient to making no-bake cheesecake. That's a problem because unless it's cold, heavy cream can be difficult or even impossible to whip. So using room temperature cream cheese often causes you to end up with a runny cheesecake filling. While a runny cheesecake batter is fine, of course, for baked cheesecake because the eggs in the mix set the filling as it bakes, for no baked cheesecake, we're completely relying on whipping cold ingredients to set the filling. The second thing to know is that not all brands of cream cheese are created equal. Some brands contain more water than others. The extra water lowers the overall fat content of the mixture, which can prevent it from whipping. I recommend sticking to good old Philadelphia cream cheese. However, I get it, you may not have it, or if you want to use the off brands, you will have to experiment to find the ones that work. Now that you have some background knowledge on no-bake cheesecake, let's make cheesecake. Before we do, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Miss Play. If you love playing mobile games, Miss Play is the app for you. Miss Play lets you earn rewards simply by discovering and playing mobile games, which can then be redeemed for gift cards. How cool is that? If you're already playing games, why not earn gift cards as well? Miss Play offers a huge catalog of mobile games from puzzle to strategy to adventure. My current favorite is Block Blast, which I have been playing every evening to wind down. Simply by playing this game or any of the many games that Miss Play has to offer, you earn points as you play, which can eventually be redeemed for gift cards from brands like Amazon, Walmart, 
Xbox, PlayStation, and many more. Over $100 million in gift cards have already been redeemed. Go to misplay.com goodies or click the link in the description to download Misplay for free. And if you sign up today using my code goodies100 inside the Misplay app, you'll get an additional 100 free points, which will help towards redeeming your first gift card. I'll leave the link in the description box below. Let's start with the dub method for the filling. It's the method we use in many restaurants and bakeries as we have to work quickly. You must be precise about how you follow the instructions here, but if you're confident in the kitchen, you can easily do this. It's so simple. To a large mixing bowl, add the cream cheese, the heavy cream, and the fine sugar. The cream cheese and the heavy cream must be straight from the fridge for the reasons I mentioned before. And you must work quickly, like a chef. I recommend using a sand mixer for this because it's the fastest way to mix these ingredients. Cover the mixture with a tea towel so that the heavy cream doesn't splatter everywhere. You're going to mix this on medium high until whipped. It should only take a couple of minutes maximum, and if you've done everything right, the mixture will be quite stiff and perfect for a cheesecake filling. Now that sounds easy, and it is. However, if you don't work quickly, or maybe you don't have a stand mixer, the mixture can end up runny and the cheesecake just won't set at all no matter how long you leave it in the fridge. This method can also lead to lumps if you're not mixing the ingredients quickly and vigorously enough. So if you're a beginner or you just can't work quickly, I'm gonna show you a method that's completely foolproof. As the dump method, everything needs to be cold. Start by adding just the cream cheese to the bowl. You're going to whip that up by itself for 10 seconds. This is a great trick because it makes it easy to incorporate the cream cheese into the heavy cream. If you've ever had a lumpy cheesecake mix, this solves that completely. Lumpy cheesecake mix is of course caused by clumps of cream cheese. Doing it this way, you smooth out any lumps before adding the heavy cream. Add the cold heavy cream and whip up the mixture until medium peaks form. Once the mixture has reached medium peaks, add the fine sugar. We add the sugar towards the end once the cream cheese heavy cream mixture has stabilized. When you add the sugar at the beginning, the sugar molecules can pull water out of the cream cheese, making the mixture liquefy and impossible to whip before you even start. So add it towards the end. As you can see, this mixture is creamy but stiff. This is how we want it to look before we transfer it to our cheesecake pan. Because this mixture is almost like a thick mousse consistency, you want to transfer this mixture little by little. I'd say in two batches, smooth it out and then add the remaining filling. This will minimize the air pockets and the gaps. Cover the pan and this needs to go in the fridge for at least eight to 10 hours. Now let's talk about a runny cheesecake filling because sometimes the mixture can end up runny. This might not be your fault as mentioned before. If you couldn't find the right type of cream cheese, it may end up runny. Don't worry, you can fix it. Just add a little gelatin to the mix and it will set up in the fridge just fine. I normally don't do this, but it is a great emergency trick to thickening your mixture if things should go wrong. The trick here is to use just enough gelatin so you don't end up with a jello texture for your cheesecake. We're not making jello, we're making cheesecake. Take one packet of gelatin and add four tablespoons of heavy cream. You're going to microwave to dissolve the gelatin and while continuing to mix, pour the melted gelatin mixture in a stream. You want to do this while you're mixing your cheesecake filling, otherwise you'll end up with clumps of gelatin. And that's another way you can destroy your cheesecake, folks. So remember, if you're using gelatin, Add it while you're mixing your cheesecake filling. Pour your cheesecake filling into the cheesecake pan and refrigerate for at least, again, eight to 10 hours. I personally just leave the cheesecake in the fridge overnight. You're going to unmold it very carefully. Unlike baked cheesecake, no baked cheesecake has a softer, more mousse consistency. So it might slightly stick to the edge of your pan. It's not an issue, just run a knife along the pan before you transfer it onto your plate. Now going back to the beginning of the video, I'm going to show you why we line the bottom with parchment paper. The parchment paper makes it super easy for you to slide your spatula in between the parchment paper and the cheesecake and slide the cheesecake onto your serving plate. 
Serve this however you please. It is springtime. Mixed berries, raspberries, strawberries are always a good option. I'm always amazed how cream cheese sugar and cream taste so delicious. It's such a simple but winning combination. If there's a timeless combination of ingredients, I would say it's this. This cheesecake is creamy, tangy, it's a crowd pleaser. Everyone will love it.